Welcome to our lecture online. In this video and the next few videos, we're going to do something very interesting. There's a method in which we can determine if the data that we're dealing with is valid or if it's skewed for some reason. For example, when we're throwing a die and the die is loaded or defective, we should be able to tell there should be a standard way of doing so. And there is. The method is called the chi-squared test of goodness of fit method. So there's actually a very good way in which we, could, which we can discern if the data we're dealing with is actually good data. And it doesn't have to do with dye, it can be any kind of data for any sort of experiment or any sort of research, and that's what makes it so powerful. So what is it? Well, it is a test to determine the probability that the experimental results are within expected results. And, and that's important, that the variation in the data is caused by purely, and oh, I got too many purely, so let me try to write that better, purely, there we go, that's how you spell that, purely random variations. And that's the key. In normal circumstances, we expect random variations because of all the potential influences that, that could uh, affect the data. So if the data varies purely randomly, then we're dealing with good data. If the data varies in an odd way where we don't expect that, where it moves away from what we would call the theoretical probabilities, then we're dealing with bad data. So how does that work? Well, it calculates the level of confidence or probability that the data is reasonable, that there's no defect or that there's nothing wrong with the data. And the equation looks like this. So CHI is pronounced chi, like the K sound. So chi equals the sum of all the trials, of all the tosses of a die, for example. And it's the sum of the difference between S sub N minus P sub N divided by P sub N. Of course, S sub N minus P sub N quantity squared. So what is that? What are those things? Well, N represents the number of possible events the number of possible outcomes. So if we're dealing with tossing a single die, then n would be 6. If we're tossing two dies, then n would be 11 because there's 11 possible outcomes. Pn is the frequency of occurrence of n possible events. So in the case of tossing a single die, n would be 6. In the parent or theoretical distribution. So the frequency, let's say if we toss a die six times, we would expect one out of six to be a six. So that's what we call the frequency of occurrence of the parent or theoretical distribution. That's what we would expect. So this is the probability of occurrence of the events that you're looking for, the expectation, the theoretical values. Sn is the frequency of occurrence of n possible events in the sample or experimental distribution. So this is the sample data, this is the theoretical data or the theoretical results. So you take the difference of each one, you square that, you sum that up, and then you divide each of these by the theoretical result. Now, for example, when we're dealing with a single die, the P sub n would be the same for all six possible values. For example, you can throw a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6 with equal probability. But if we're dealing with two dies, then of course, all the events will have different probabilities of occurrence, and so you'll have to divide by different numbers each time you take the delta. The number of possibilities that you'll throw a 1 minus the expected probability, the number of possibilities that you'll throw a 2 minus the expected pro probability, and so forth. And we'll show you some examples of that later. So once you sum all that up, that is equal to psi or chi squared. Sometimes I call it psi, but it's really chi squared, chi squared. Then we go to this table. Now, we're not going to show you now, at this moment, how this table is derived. That's for a later video. But notice that this line right here represents the level of confidence or probability. That's the important thing we're looking for. The level of probability. This is very high level of confidence, and this is very low level of confidence. So it has to do with the validity of the data. Here we're very highly confident the data is good. Here we're very low confidence 
that the data is good. And notice there's a very quick transition from very high confidence to very low confidence. So either we're on the left side or on the right side, there's not a lot of room in between because that's really what it comes down to. We want to see a number that gives us a very high confidence or a number that gives us a very low confidence. The in-between, of course, is indeterminate. Let's say we get a result of 50% relative uh, level of confidence, then, well, is it good data, is it bad data? We can't really tell. But if it's 95 or it's 0.05, then, of course, we can tell easily. Then here's chi-squared. So we're going to calculate a value. Now, if chi-squared is a small value, then we have very high level of confidence. If chi-squared is a big value, then we have very low level of confidence. And, of course, you can tell here that a small value means that there's very little difference between the experimental data and the theoretical data. If chi-square is a big number, then there's a large difference between the experimental data and the, uh, the theoretical data. And notice, chi-squared magnifies the differences. So if there's a few values that are very different from the expected, and then, so that means that this difference is large, and then you square it, it really bumps up the value of chi. And that's the key to this method. So if you have three or four or five values that are very different, you begin to be very suspect. If there's some, a few values that are very different, then of course you have a higher level of confidence. If most of the readings are very close to the expected value, then when you sum them all up, you get a small sum. If many values are kind of far away from the expected value and sum them all up, you get a very big value. And of course, this also helps you in the weighted average, right? Or in the weighted sum. Because, for example, if you're looking for throwing two dies and the number of times that you throw a two is very different from the expected value, well, then you divide by a very small representation here because it can only happen when you have two ones. And then, of course, there's, you divide by a small number so that bumps up the chi-square value as well. Now here, we want to show you some examples of some data we might want to look at. So here we're tossing a single die 12 times. So that means that on average, we'd expect each of the six numbers to appear twice. On our first trial, we're not that different from what we'd expect. 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3. So you can see that the deviation are no more than one away from the expected value for any of the values, and two of them are right spot on where we expect them to be. Now, of course, it is easy to tell when you know what the theoretical values are. And you can look at it and go, yep, that looks like a fairly good trial. I would expect that this die could be expected. I would have a high level of confidence that this die will give me a good result, that it's a good die. And I would expect that if I calculate the chi-square on this data, I would get a very small chi-square value and it will put me somewhere in the high level of confidence. Now, I do a second trial with a different die. Notice I get very different results. I have much more variation in the case of the number 5. It appeared 5 out of 12 times. That's almost 50% of the time. That's a very unusual situation. And I can see that there's much more variation in this trial than there was in this trial. I would expect a much greater chi-square value, and therefore it pushed me into a much lower level of confidence that I was dealing with a good die. And so that's how this works. Now, of course, there's nothing like some good examples, so we're going to work out several examples using this method to determine the level of confidence we have in the data. It's a great method, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. That's how it's done.